My new suspension has developed a bit of a squeak. I noticed this about a thousand miles into my trip to Illinois. I thought it was just the louver strut creaking whenever I hit a bump. But as it got louder, it became clear that it was coming from this corner. It seems like the noise is coming from the top of the shock. The bushing doesn't look very compressed. I'll just spray on some silicone and torque it down and see if that works. That did not work. Well, there are two rear shocks, so let me check the other side and see if I'm missing anything obvious. This tower looks fine. The bushing is nicely compressed, sitting in that bowl-like reinforcement thing. And here's the passenger side. I think I see the problem. The way this is supposed to work is that there's this bowl-like shape on the top of the shock tower that's clamped between the bushings. I think the idea here is that the bowl acts as a kind of arch to distribute the force across the top of the tower, probably to make up for the fact that the frame is made of relatively thin 16 gauge steel. And this is what the passenger side currently looks like. That's probably not good. I'm not sure why that's causing the squeaking, but it's not supposed to look like that. So I need to fix that before I do anything else. With the shock out of the way, you can see that this is in pretty bad shape. At least the middle part is. The edges are still solid. I just have to figure out what I'm going to do about it. There were a few ways I could try to fix this. My first thought was to just cut out all the damaged parts and weld in a new thicker steel plate. I figured that if I used thick enough steel, I could brute force my way around that reinforcement arch. This seems like an easy solution. The problem is access. The body sits just a few inches above the tower and it'll be hard to get a torch in there, much less finding a way to cut out all the bad parts without damaging the body. This means I'd have to remove the body. I haven't done that before, but I hear it involves removing a dozen or so bolts that hold the body and frame together. And everything that goes through the body, the fuel lines, steering, electrical, coolant hoses, AC fittings, throttle cables, a bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to do that. The next option is to replace the frame entirely. I mean, if I'm going to have to remove the body anyway, that would be the time to do it. But that means finding a frame, either a good used one or an old stock one or one of the new stainless steel ones. I'd want to go stainless, of course, but I don't think there are very many of those made for automatics. That would mean modifying a brand new frame or converting away from the automatic which means sourcing a manual transmission, a pedal box, and so forth. I'm not quite ready to do a frame swap yet, both from a time and a money standpoint, so let's rule that one out. This brings us to the last option, bolt in a reinforcement plate. I clean up the rusted bits and install the new plate from the bottom. Since only the center is rusted out, this should work fine. The plate will redistribute the forces to the outside of the tower where it's still strong. It may not be the ideal solution, but it is a fast and easy solution. Guess which one I'm doing. So I got a few five inch by five inch plates. I considered using a quarter inch thick plate, but I think one eighth of an inch is strong enough for this. It's still thicker than what the frame is made out of and probably strong enough to take the force of the suspension without the reinforcement arc. The first thing I had to do was clean up the tower. I cut out as much of the rusted metal as I could, which wasn't as much as I would have liked. Like I said, there's not a lot of access. Yeah, that still looks awful. I tried to get rid of the raised dome by crushing it down with my new plate, some washers, and a bolt. That didn't really do anything, except bend my plate a little bit. Since I didn't want a gap between the plate and the top of the tower, I tried filling it with some thick washers. I tack welded them to the plate so they wouldn't shift around, and I covered everything with some black paint to keep the rust away. Next, I have to drill some holes in the frame. I need to leave enough room for the spring collar, so the holes will have to be in the corners. This wasn't a problem for the outer holes, but the inner holes were basically impossible with the body still on the car. The body overlaps the frame, and there's no way to get a bolt in there, even if I could drill it straight, which I couldn't. Luckily, I don't need that many bolts. The only reason I'm bolting it in the first place is to keep it from rattling around. The shock stem will go through the center, and the plate will be pinched by the bushings there should be enough of what's left at the top of the shocks tower to hold it in place and keep it aligned. Admittedly, it's rusted out and kind of the weakened part of the tower, but with the addition of the two bolts in the corner, it should be fine. If it's a problem, I can add another thin plate on top. I then proceeded to make a mess of drilling the holes in the plate. Because of how close the body is to the top of the tower, I couldn't get a pen in there to mark it through the holes. 
Instead, I measured out the holes of the piece of cardboard, then transferred those to the plate. This worked fine for the spacing, but I screwed up my measurements from the edge and wound up having to drill twice on one side and three times in the other. At this point, I just wanted to see if it would work at all, and it looked like it would, right up until I tried to put the shock in. It seems I forgot to take into account the length of the shock stem. It's not longer than three stacked washers on a steel plate. So this first attempt was just an all-around mess. Let's try that again. Instead of using washers, I decided I could make my steel plate bow upward to match the top of the shock tower. Luckily, I have a press and a 3D printer. I designed some simple dies and printed them with 100% infill, which means they're basically solid blocks of plastic. The idea is to press a dome into the plate that's big enough to fit the bushing and allow enough of the stem to extend above the tower to get the nut on. I made the dies to account for the thickness of the plate, so once fully pressed, the plate should exactly conform to the die. This actually worked. Mostly. The dome on the positive die crushed a bit in the press, but it got about halfway there. I modified the die to be a bit more exaggerated and ran off another print. While I was printing, I decided to try to crush down the top of the shock tower again. This time I drilled a hole in the thicker steel plate, bolted it in place, and used my impact gun to force the two together. This time, it worked. It flattened the top of the tower without bending the plate. It was also easier to chip away the old flaking epoxy without that bulge in the way. And now I didn't need the new die either. The shallow dome that I'd already pressed into the plate was plenty. I still had to drill the mounting holes in the new plate. Since my measuring trick didn't work so well the last time, I tried dipping some Q-tips in paint and using that to mark directly through the holes in the shock tower. The drilled holes matched up exactly. I covered everything with a few coats of POR15. The plate, the frame, and this bit of rust on the other side. This looks pretty bad at a glance, like the metal had actually split apart, but it's just the old epoxy flaking off. There's some rust, but the metal's still strong, so I just cleaned it up and coated it pretty thoroughly with the POR15. Now to put everything back together. I made resetting the ride height easier by clamping on a spring compressor and spraying the threads with silicone. Other than the silicone leaking onto the wrench and making that slippery, it worked pretty well. And now for a test drive. And the battery's dead. And I do mean dead, less than five volts. A car battery is considered dead below 11 volts or so, depending on who you talk to. My battery tender wouldn't even try to charge it. It thought it was trying to charge a six volt battery at 12 volts and just blinked an error at me. I had to pull out the old heavy duty charger that buzzes when you turn it on. After a few hours, the battery was fully charged. I should probably get it load tested at some point. I'm sure it's fine. And no video of mine would be complete without replacing this wheel bearing, again. I got a grinding noise that turned to a squealing noise this time. This is the fourth time I've replaced this bearing. That was my last spare too. I'm starting to think something is wrong with the hub, so I'm gonna keep this shiny new one in the trunk, just in case. Anyway, the shock tower repair worked. The squeak is gone and my shock tower should be a lot stronger than it was, probably. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I can upgrade to the quarter inch plate if I need to. I'm not sure I'll be able to press that dome into it with my plastic dies, but now that the top of the shock tower is flattened, I may not have needed to do that in the first place. I should probably put a second thin plate on top just for some extra strength, but I'll worry about that some other time. Be sure to let the algorithm know that you liked what you saw and that you want to see more of it, and thanks for watching.